In this lesson, we'll take a look at some of the options we have for creating UV layouts for the pieces of our sword. So here is the sword that we have, and I've gone ahead and uh, just used the Subtool Master to mirror over this uh, piece after I've done a little bit of sculpting, just adding a little bit of sharpness there, making it look kind of like a carved piece. Also adding the bony pieces. I think adding those pieces there uh, kind of adds a little bit of weight to that connection there. It doesn't make it look so, uh, you know, so fragile right there. And it also serves to kind of tie everything together with these bony elements, and then also with the red coming through here and then up here in the in the blade. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, what we want to do now is get all of this geometry, which is really high resolution geometry, with also some color painted into the pixels. And uh, and so we want to get that out of ZBrush and into something manageable in Cinema 4D. And to do that, we need to create maps. Uh, maps for the color, maps for the normal maps, and so those maps are going to be created based on UVs for our object. So if our object doesn't have any UVs, there's nothing that it's going to use to create the maps. It can't do it. So we need to actually create some UVs. Now there are a few options for us uh, to create UVs. Here in ZBrush, if for instance we take a look at this piece here, uh, let's go ahead and take it all the way down to level 1. There are a few options for creating UVs very quickly here in ZBrush. So we'll go down under the tool palette into UV map. We can choose a size for a UV map. And then there are a number of automatic uh, projection mapping options here. And so this is the packed UV tiles. So for instance, I could go ahead and just click that. And then we can check that out by going into texture map, saying new texture map from UV map. And that'll give us a look at what our uh, UVs look like. And right now they don't really make much sense. It's just kind of a big grid of polygons. And so it's broken down that model into this big grid, and we can't really make too much sense of it. The program is able to figure it out and figure out where things go. But if you were to go in and try to paint a uh, texture on that, it's going to be very difficult to do that because it's all broken down. So we want to create something that is a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more human-friendly, so that we can uh, paint our texture. So if we want to do that, we also have an option here for using a plugin called the UV Master. And so this is also available at the Download Center on Pixelogic site. And just go ahead and grab that and drop it into your uh, Z your plugs folder, uh, Z Startup. And uh, then I'm not going to really set any kind of uh, changes on this. I'm not going to go ahead and I'm not going to copy or paste any UVs. Uh, I'm not going to do any sort of control painting. Let's just do a basic unwrap here. And so I'll just go ahead and hit unwrap. Okay. So it's created created two islands here. So I'll go ahead and create a new new from UV map, and this is going to show us that this has actually created a couple of islands there, which make a little bit more sense. Um, they're not exactly what we might expect, but they're at least separated into two pieces, and you can see it sort of unfolded there. So we make we can make a little bit of uh, of sense of it. Okay, so that's a a couple of options that you can use. Okay, we can do the same thing here. Let's say on on the grip. We want to just make sure that we take that down to the low level and go into UV map and we can choose the uh, the size that we want. Um, and then we could either do this automatic or we could actually come up here and unwrap this one and then check that out. And you can see that it's created this layout over here. Kind of unfolded it that way. Okay. Uh, there may be cases where, we, for instance, we don't want to use the UV master. We don't want to use ZBrush's. UV tools, we want to do the UV mapping in something that we're more familiar with, let's say Cinema 4D. Well, we can update our UVs in Cinema 4D as well. So looking at our uh, blade, if we take that down to the lowest level and look at that, you can see there's our low res version. Okay, so we could go up and create UVs uh, using UV Master, or we could take our uh, subtool here, and I've got that selected, and we'll just hit Go Z continue and that's going to take that blade over to Cinema 4D where we can see it here and now you can see it has a material already assigned and also a Fong tag but we don't have a UV uh, tag yet and so let's go into tags and let's uh, generate UVW coordinates okay and so now we have the uh, UV coordinates here so I do that and so I'm going to go into our UV edit Okay, and so I want to select some polygons here. So let me select this. And 
and choose some polygons. Now I want to see, I want to only select basically the polygons on one side. And so you can see I've actually got some selected on the other side. So I can just come in here and just make sure that I've only got the polygons selected that I want. And so I basically just want to come right up to that line there. We'll leave that triangle for the other side. Okay, we'll come down here and check just to make sure. You can see we've got an extra one right there that we can get rid of. Coming down here, you can see we have a few polygons we need to add to the mix. Okay, and just make our way around just looking and making sure that we have everything selected that we want and everything deselected that we don't want. So once we've got that single side, um, I'm going to just do a frontal map. Should go here and do a frontal map. Okay, and then go to move and move that out. Okay, and then we can select the rest of these, do another map here. Okay. And I'm actually going to turn that so it's opposite. Okay. And now if we want to take these and go into relax, we can start to relax those down. Do the same thing here. Okay. If we have any sort of manual tweaking that we want to do on this, we can. Um, and then we can come in and arrange these. So bringing these in, depending on how you want to arrange these, we can take them both and try to maximize our space usage if we want to manually just kind of rotate those around and just try to fit them inside there okay there are also some um, automatic sort of commands that you can use uh, to do that as well okay so now let's say we've got our UVs done and you can spend a little bit more time on that if you want but I'm going to call that uh, good here and so let's say we've got now our UVs created on this particular mesh. So now let's go ahead and go back to ZBrush using Go Z. It's going to bring the geometry back in here. Okay, doesn't look like much has happened. We didn't change the geometry at all. All we've done is update the UV. So looking at this blade, you can see that we can still go up and down our subdivision. So we can still update all of our uh, sculpting but now if we go back in here and take a look a new from UV map you can see that our UVs are now based on the UVs that we built in Cinema 4D so it's really quickly just updated those UVs here in ZBrush using the UVs we did in Cinema 4D and it was just a uh, basically a one click solution to get that over with Go Z uh, did the UVs really quickly in here and another one click to send it back and you can see that really we didn't really see anything happen but the UVs were, de were uh, updated there okay and so just to use some of the options that we looked at you can take the geometry out to Cinema 4D to do those UVs you can also use some of ZBrush's built-in UV functionality and you just want to create UV maps for the different pieces so we've got the grip and I just use UV, UV Master for that we use Cinema 4D for the blade uh, for the the bony part of the hilt we use the UV master and then you just have the the drip part here of the carving that we've got and then the guard is basically all you have left okay and so if you want to spend more time really modifying the UVs you might go into Cinema 4D and do that otherwise you can use ZBrush so let's come in in the next lesson with all of our UVs done and the UVs don't have to match exactly you just want to have some sort of a layout so that we can get our maps out and then we'll look at getting our geometry and maps out of ZBrush and into Cinema 4D. So we'll take a look at that in the next lesson.